Hey everybody, and welcome to the second part of modeling the wooden paddle bench. Uh, this is basically what you're seeing here, is where we stopped in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that one, go check it out. And this is the bench that we are trying to recreate. So far we've created the size. So in this uh, video, we're going to continue on with the rest of the elements in here and get them ready to uh, get them to the next step, which would be to create a high poly and then bake it down. All right, so in here, what I want to do first is uh, I want to get on the top side and in here from this box, I'm going to just go and uh, apply an ended poly and just grab this uh, polygon on the top and detach it as a clone. And the reason for this is just so I can reuse that piece of geometry in here. Well, that should be more or less the, uh, the right size for what we needed to be used for like that. Now, just snap it in here. So now I know exactly where I want to have the top of my seat be. Now, what I want to do in here is I'm going to first of all, select this thing and hide it. So I have uh, this piece, which I know is the width, but we do need to take into account that inside that uh, size, I want to have this thing like so. So that would mean that I'm going to have to get in here. And before I do anything else, I'm going to uh, go in here and add in one connect, which will allow it for me to just work on one side and not and then just simply go over to the other side with the help of the symmetry modifier. All right, so we have this thing uh, as it is. Now I'm going to uh, select this, delete. And from here, I can basically control how far back I want this thing to go to. Uh, if I take a look at my image, I can see that right about in here where this inner piece starts is where the seat ends and it uh, extends uh, just a tiny bit fraction of in front of where this thing uh, starts. So let's get that thing uh, in. So I'm going to select this, move it backwards to about where this thing starts. And on this side, I want to move it to about before this thing ends about there. So I think that this should be more or less the size for this. Now I want to symmetry this thing on the uh, other side as well, like so. I'm going to go edit poly, remove that middle piece. And now here's the thing. I want to check out and see how many planks that we have here. I can see that we have one, two, three, four, five. So in order to make that thing easy for us, I'm going to select just this thing, select these two edges and go with the connect and go with five segments. Or actually four segments, which will give us five boards. So one, two, three, four, five. Click OK, like that. Awesome. And now, uh, since all of these are actually separate, uh, separate from one, one each other, I'm going to go over to the chamfer modifier make it a very small chamfer is like 0 0.3 maybe maybe even lower 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 yeah this is going to work and click on open over here and click ok all right cool so we have that uh thing done so we're just going to add in a shell that shell is going to be about three, three centimeters but on the lower side not going up so now we know that the height is right for this thing and more or less we got the seating for this bench now another thing that i want to do is before i move on to the other side i want to uh, actually add a chamfer modifier on this so i'm going to hit with a chamfer modifier again a very small amount let's try 0.3 Let's check it from the top, see if this thing is touching anywhere. Nope, everything is fine here. So 0 0.3 is going to be just fine and go on the tension of a 0 0.5 like that. All right. 
Now, the reason why we're doing this is, like I said, later on, I want to add in a high poly version and then bake everything in. And with the help of this uh, corner in here, we can get a much better bead of light or a corner which will uh, grab some uh, light when the light is hitting it. Let me try with Turbo Smooth really quickly. And uh, this is not the ideal thing for Turbo Smooth because we're gonna need to add in some uh, extra edges later on just to break up this very long uh, polygons. But for now, this thing is just great. Now, another thing that I want to do is, before we do this, let's add in that support going uh, from here and all the way back. But actually, before we do that, I want to address the back side of this thing and that is actually creating the paddles. Now, for the paddle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse uh, my geometry that I've already created. So I'm going to get this thing up to about here, rotate it around. Let's unhide everything. And this is going to give me more or less the idea as to where this thing is supposed to be at, like this. All right, cool. Now, uh, since I don't want to have this thing rotated like this, let's get it back to zero, like so. Move this thing up. I have the width of this thing. So I'm going to go and backtrack like this all the way to about there. So with the symmetry, actually without the thing. Now, I want to go in here and make this thing into just one paddle. Because from what I can see here, this is basically four paddles with the fourth one being cut up at the, uh, the, at the top in here. So four paddles, that means I can remove this thing. And for it, I'm gonna go in here, just add in one connect right around. Let's try and guesstimate where this thing would be. Probably around here. There we go. That's fine. And one more edge in here. Now, the reason for doing this is that now when I select both of these, I'm going to go to the center of my selection and I can scale it in. I will definitely be scaling this thing in as well. There we go. Now I have the geometry for this paddle. Let's go something like this. All right, so from what I'm seeing here, these are actually very straight cuts, not, not much rounding to it. I can probably get the ones on the corners. And oh, before we do that, let's just give it a shelf. That shell is going to be the same thing that we have here. So the width is, again, three centimeters. And go ahead and edit, edit poly and just select the corners in here and these ones over here and chamfer these. Let's go with a bigger chamfer, like two centimeters maybe, and a couple of edges like that. All right, cool. Now, Really quickly, let's just add in some cuts over here, one more over here. And actually, I'm going to go back. And instead of putting in, yeah, I'm just going to do this. So, one. So now I can select those. That's fine. All right. Now I convert to an edible poly. Sometimes where Max doesn't want to play around, we just do this. Now isolate this thing. Do the same thing in the bottom. Same thing over here and over here. do a couple of connects just so we have quads 
even though it's a very elongated quad, not ideal, but in this case, it's just going to be fine. Shouldn't be any problems. All right, so now I'm going to add in a chamfer in this. Again, be, make sure you don't have anything selected though before we add the chamfer. So now with a chamfer added, a very small amount, like 0 0.1 might even be enough. Yeah, that's fine. Now increase the minimum angle until we get rid of everything that we don't want. Even more like that. All right, so it's now it's only on the corners that we want to have that chamfer like that. Everything else is just fine. All right. Now, if I put on a turbo smooth, it should give me a better result, but I will need to add in some support edges in here to hold this edge. So on top of the chamfer, just add in one cut over here, hit the chamfer again, 0 0.1 like that and now once we put on turbo smooth it's going to hold that form like that and i should probably edit one more connection in here because we want to have that sharp translation or transition so chamfer 0 0.1 2 there you go so now with the turbo smooth it should be a very very sharp look we have nice turns at the corners, nice turn over here. All right, the anti-isolate. All right, so what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and hold on shift, turn, uh, delete the turbo smooth, hold on shift, rotate this thing 180 degrees, like so. Now from the top, I'm actually gonna isolate just these two, move this thing up just a tiny bit so we have some crevice in, uh, between them select both of them hold on shift and just one more time to about there there we go and I'm gonna rotate them 180 degrees just so it's in line with, with what I'm having here so the only thing that I want to change in here is that the top, the one that I have, I want to get these vertices up here to be in line with these ones down there. So I'm going to snap over here. So first of all, snap this thing like so, snap those in like that and there we go that thing goes there this thing can move so we get one of those to snap over here and it's close enough i guess we can go in and try to get this thing to perfectly snap so just on the y there we go. But I think this is going to work just well enough for what we needed to do. All right, so now I want to unhide everything or end the isolate. Rotate it around 80. Move it into position or try it with something like that. All right, the height is more or less just okay. Make sure nothing is uh, touching. And what I can see is that from what I can get is that I probably should scale these guys a bit. So there are something like this, so it's a bit smaller. Let's try it like this, because once I'm looking at my uh, reference here I can see that this thing does not extend all the way up to here so we have some gap and with the size that we had them previously on that there was no gap but now we have that gap happening which is more or less right to what we wanted to have
Now, before I add in the last element, which is going to be this uh, board that's holding the back and the seat, what I want to do is make this thing a tiny bit different. And what I mean by that is, for example, if I take a look at some of the other uh, park benches, what I can notice is that they have a, this bit of a slope. So if even if we take a look at in here, this is a different sort of uh, seating, but it all of them have this kind of a slope because they, they are not very uh, plain. Like, for example, even this one, you can see that it has this um, bit of a slope that should help with the seating. So let's add in something like this before uh, we, uh, we start actually going in and adding in more details. And it's actually going to be very easy to create it in this case. All I'm going to do is on top of the chamfer for the seat, I'm going to go in and drop in a bend modifier. Now this bend modifier is going to have a bit of an angle. I'm going to go and check on the different uh, axes. And right here, I think that on the X axis is just fine. But I'm going to go inside the gizmo and rotate this thing 90 degrees. So 90 like this. And just increase the angle a bit. Let's try with something like 60. There we go. So now we have that slight slope for the seating should probably help with making this thing a more uh, pleasant seating uh, arrangement. And also, let me go ahead and try and do the same thing for the back. But in here, let's try and do the same thing and see how that thing is going to work here because this is actually a different geometry. So let's see. We go on the X. Now we turn the gizmo to 90 degrees. Nah, not really. For the back won't actually work because if it's like this, the paddles will not be very functional or would not be made this way or because they would not be functional. So I'm going to delete this and leave the back as it is. All right, so once we have this, let's just uh, take the contours of the back and the, uh, the seat. And based on them, let's just create one piece. I just isolate this. I just create one piece that will basically follow along here. So I'm going to go with the line. Go all the way down here. One over here and one in here. Now the reason for putting in this extra vert in here is just so I can move it up there. In the rendering, enable in render in viewport so I can see what's going on. Go rectangular. And now I just move it into position. It's actually right where I want it. Move it down to here. Move it up here. And there we go. We have this thing right now. I want to increase the width to something like maybe let's write five. All right. Awesome. Move it downwards. Move it back just so it's not clipping. There we go. And now, once we put in the edit poly on top of here, we can, with the Swift loop, add in some extra geometry like there. Put it upwards. One more. Put it upwards in there. Make sure you clean up uh, this edge that would happen in there. Control backspace. Now move this thing to the corner. Like there. And probably I can work with this. Or I can just ever so slightly scale this thing inwards. So it's more in line with what I'm seeing on the model. There we go. Like this. All right. So 
let's very quickly add in some support edges or chamfers with this thing. Let's try with uh, the chamfer modifier and see how that thing works. So 0 0.2 should be just fine. Everything here is okay. Tension of 0 0.5. I want to hold this corner. But ah, let's just go ahead and manually do this thing because it's going to be easier. Select all the corners that I want to have them chamfered. I want to miss out on any of them. Get all of these chamfered as well. And manually hit the chamfer. All right, so chamfer 0 0.1. That is fine. Okay, 0 0.5. There we go. Cool. All right. So now if we apply a turbo smooth on top of this, it should hold this form really well. No issues. Even up here, although I think they were missing something here. Oh, we're not. The only thing that I'm my missing in here is once we want to add in the high poly, I'm probably going to have to go in and add in a few edges just so I don't have any problems with uh, long uh, polygons over here. All right, so before we end this, center to object, and I want to get this thing to go pivot to pivot, align it to the actual seat, because now we can go in here and with the mirror on the X axis, I can make it a copy. And now I have that seat on both sides. So I'm going to delete on the turbo smooths. There we go. And de isolate. Awesome. All right. So now the only thing that's uh, left is to put in the supporting edges on this side. So we but that actually, I can do that thing uh, once we start creating the high poly model. So if I take a look at this model, I can see that I've actually created the majority of the elements that are done for the low poly model. Now, for the high poly model, the only thing that I'm probably missing here is uh, these uh, ropes that are around um, my cylinder. But we can create the high poly version of those in the next video. And we're going to simply take the basis uh, of that geometry and reuse it in the low poly version. So with this, we pretty much uh, covered the second uh, video uh, in here in making the low poly version. So I hope you guys had fun and you learned something new in this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video as always. If you enjoyed the video, then please click that like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video where we will continue modeling this chair. All right. See you then. Bye-bye.